we were hoping that Julie Roberts was going to be on the show, but then a plane was late. Um, so in the case of Julie Roberts, it would have been her plane. It would, yeah, privately <laughs> landed, but it was too late uh, uh, to be included. Uh, but anyway, the movie is Leave the World Behind, which is a Netflix film. Yeah, yes. Yeah, uh, so it's, I think. it is a. It was. It opened in cinemas last week, and it comes to Netflix today. A uh, psychological thriller adapted from a novel by Ruben Alam, directed by Sam Esmail, who was the showrunner on Mr. Robot. And at the beginning, there's an exec producer credit for... Well, it's really... Because it, it is one of those pause discuss in the room. <laughs> exactly. It's Barack and Michelle Obama. Yes. Which, I mean, obviously, of course, they're out there doing stuff in the real world, but it is just like... Yeah. And also, he always publishes a list of his favourite movies and his favourite books. Precisely and, you know, and so. And so on. So it would have come... Yeah. Well, they are both very culturally connected. You know, they both read and see and listen and, yes. you know, and unlike some others who came afterwards. Oh, I see what you're saying. So um, Julia Roberts and Ethan Hawke are a couple who decide to get away from it all. I with think what kids. you're saying, by the way, is if you asked Barack Obama for his favourite Bible verse, he would he would probably be able to quote a few. Yes, and also to <laughs> quote it beautifully. Yes, that's and right. you know, and then to, to contextualize why it was that that particular you thing. Do and a then, sermon. Yeah, and then then, and then then mention a couple of different translations of that particular thing, and then tell an anecdote about how somebody in his family had actually turned to that particular thing during a and sing a hymn and sing a hymn. Yes, yeah. all anyway, of those. Yes. Oh God, it's like it's like Camelot, isn't it? It's like Tony it shall not come against us anymore. Anyway, Judy Robs and Ethan Hawke, they're a couple. She, very, very early on, she realizes that she hates people. So she decides that they're gonna get away from she, what yeah, she, she, she does. Says. She hates people. So they want to get away from it all. They have kids. Um, she's Amanda, and uh, he's Clay. And uh she says uh, that she's booked this dream house for them to go and stay in for a while, and they're going now. And he goes, what, now? She says, yeah, I've booked it. It's all happening. Fine. So they go there and it's great. They get to this place. I mean, it must be, it's owned by a billionaire, presumably. Everything about it is high tech. It's got an incredible, you know, outlook and it's, you know, remote and swimming pool. Swimming, but the what? whole, the whole nine yards. Whilst they are there on holiday, something strange happens, which is that they are on a beach and they see in the distance a great big oil tanker. And the oil tanker appears to be getting nearer. And it appears to be getting nearer. And then it appears to be very, very near indeed, running aground near, in fact. And this is a really well rendered yes, sequence. It's very good. They go back to the house and they discover that things aren't working. The internet's not working properly. They're having, you know, it's no big deal, but it means that the, 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 the daughter in the family, who's desperate to see the final episodes of Friends, can't see it because the internet's working and she could not work and she can't download it. And then in the middle of the night, there is a knock at the door. Here's a clip. You must be Amanda. Uh, Amanda Sanford, right? You, you two know each other? No, we have not had the pleasure of meeting face to face. I'm, I'm GH, GH Scott. George, he's George. That's how it reads in his email. Oh. <laughs> Forgive me, I forgot. See, this is why I much prefer life before the internet. Because we would have spoken on the phone, we would have recognized my voice and known that this is our house. I'm sorry? Uh, this is our house. I'm the George you emailed back and forth with. No, I, I remember the name. I just... This is... This is your house. So, what's going on in that scene, okay? That's Mahershala Ali, turns up and says... He's fantastic, isn't he? He's, he's fantastic in absolutely everything. Um, but he says, this is my house. And she looks at him like, this is your... What do you mean, this is your house? Now, what do, what's confusing her about that? Well, it's, you know, one of the readings is clearly that it's, sorry, this is your house, but you're an African-American. You can't possibly be the person that owns this house. She never says that, never says it out loud. And the film never explicitly kind of, you know, goes to that place, except a little later on, the sort of tension starts to arise. They say it's him with his daughter. They say they got stranded. They need to stay the night. They apologize. She says, you can't. We booked the house. He says, look, let me make it right, okay? I'll pay you back, you know, whatever it was that you paid for. All we need to do is sleep downstairs because there's a basement downstairs. He sort of proves that he knows his way around the house because he, he knows how to get into the drinks cabinet and he knows where things are. Although there's a couple of things that don't 
quite seem to... Also, there are no photographs of him or his family anyway. Yes, although, as um, Ethan Hawke says, yes, but if you rent out a house, you take away the photographs mm -hmm. because, you know, you, you're making it into a thing. So there's a certain level of ambiguity. Um, as far as Clay is concerned, he's, okay, fine, I buy it. You know, the, he's, the, I, could, I take the guy at his word and he's got the money and he's got the thing. Julia Roberts is, hang on, hang on, we're in a house with my kids. I don't know this person. I don't know who they are. They're going to sleep downstairs. You're happy with this. I'm not happy with it. And then there are also other questions, like it, the story that they tell about, well, we, you know, we, we got stranded. We couldn't get, but I left my jacket. I didn't have the keys to the book. Something's not quite right. Now, to say any more would be to spoil the film, except that to say that for all the sort of external trappings of, you know, why, why is the internet down? What is going on? Essentially, it's a story about four people in a house and you know, some other characters, the young characters, four people in a house not trusting each other, not quite knowing exactly why they don't trust each other. And it's a drama which is about race and class and identity and paranoia and trust and a bunch of things. But brilliantly, it's dressed up as a kind of, and is it a disaster movie? Well, if it's a disaster movie, I mean, what was the thing with the with the tanker running aground? What's the thing with the internet being off? Do you remember 10 Cloverfield Lane? I remember which, you talking about it. It's a film in which the whole thing takes place in a basement in which somebody wakes up, they're tied up in a basement, and they're told that they're there because there's been an alien invasion. But really what it's all about is what's going on in the house. Um, it also, I think, totally it had something of uh, Annihilation which was a science fiction movie that Barack Obama incidentally included in his list of the, his favorite films of the year when it came out. And I thought that was a really interesting touchstone because I think this has something of that in it. I thought it did a terrific job of revealing only gradually what's going on in the story. I thought the performances were really well done. I thought the tensions between them were really well done. I think the way in which, I mean, it, it's that, that thing that you want. It's smart, entertaining fare that on the one hand is a, maybe it's a genre movie, maybe it's a disaster movie, maybe it's a science fiction movie, but actually it's really, it's about other things, but it's dressed up in those clothes to make it entirely accessible. I thought that that idea about if there's a disaster, it's an internal disaster, it's a kind of, it's, it's a domestic disaster, worked really well. It's also got an absolutely beautiful sting in the tail. And I thought hey, it was one of the films that when it ended, I went, well done. That is a really, really good ending. One of the reasons why the, I, I, I was five minutes in and that I realised I'd read the book and, oh. and interviewed Ruman Alam, the author of the book. And one of the reasons why it was such a huge hit is it came out in lockdown. So I didn't know that. So the book is about, it, well, it starts as four people stuck in a house, which then becomes six people stuck in a house. Um, so is the book very different? No, no, no. The, 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 so they have six. So there's two people yeah, and they're, they're two, yeah, two kids. Two kids and they say, yeah, fine, yeah. It's different in as much as Mahershala Ali character arrives with his wife rather than his daughter. Right, okay. But it's a lockdown book. So it comes out in lockdown, and there are six people in a house trying to get on with tensions, and that's exactly what they've got in, in this particular film. And there's one other thing, which I think is okay to... I mean, I mentioned it in the interview ages ago with... There is something about someone's teeth falling out. Yeah, which is... Which is really, absolutely really... Absolutely horrific. When you think in, you know, in horror movies, you, any of them, you've seen a lot worse than that. Yeah. But there is something. I kept about thinking he's going to. I kept up. thinking he's going to wake up, and this is a dream. And you go, no, no, he's not. It's not a dream. His teeth are falling out, and I have a. I, I've got terrible, terrible teeth, and um, there's one of these things. If you dream about your teeth falling out, it's meant to mean a bunch of stuff. In my case, if I dream about my teeth falling out, it's because my teeth are falling out. That scene of teeth falling out is absolutely it's horrible, isn't it? Horrible. And as we've discussed many times on this program before. If a deer turns up in a movie, run. You're in trouble. Run. And there are so many deer in this film, you know which way it's going to go. I thought it was great, I though. Was great I really enjoyed it. It's on Netflix, isn't it? It's on Netflix now. It's been in cinemas for a week. It's on Leave Netflix now. The World Behind is the name. And of course, the other thing, just because you mentioned the Barack Obama thing, is that because there's sort of maybe end of the worldy stuff happening outside of this house. Mm. Being a former president, he would know precisely what the government is doing. I mean, we don't see. It's not about the government. It's not, it's not but that also, kind of but it, So it raises the interesting question about who is Mahershala Ali's character? Yes. What, what does he know and what doesn't he know? Yeah. You know, very, I, very I thought good. it was really well judged. Thanks very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed 
watching it as much as we enjoyed making it. While you're here, check out all the other videos because they're cool too, aren't they? Yeah, and if you want to keep up to date with everything Kermit and Mayo's take, then check out our social channels. I mean, why wouldn't you? I mean, I, I would. I have done. Excellent.